Lower WAN gateways open up all kinds of innovative opportunities for your community, but they're not very useful unless we deploy nodes that can talk to the same. So in this video, I'll explain how to set up an Arduino with an SX1276 LoRa radio module so that you can start deploying your sensor nodes to communicate with gateways. I'll start with a simple node to send a hello world message to the Things network, and then demonstrate sending sensor data using a Feather MO LoRa module coupled with a DHT22 temperature humidity sensor in line with the tutorial published by Adafruit. So let's get started. In order to set up a node, we'll need an SX1276 LoRa module. Since I'm operating in the United States, I'll be using a radio tuned to 915 MHz, which is the frequency licensed by the FCC for industrial, scientific, and medical purposes. To facilitate integrating this little radio with an Arduino, I've seen other makers refer to this Dragino LoRa shield, which integrates nicely with an Arduino Uno. For my demo, I'll be using this LoRa radio transceiver breakout offered by Adafruit. Note that the unit doesn't come with this antenna, but you can purchase a commercial one tuned to your license frequency for LoRa, or just add a wire antenna cut to the appropriate length for your region. Of course, you'll also want an Arduino to do the back-end work. It doesn't have to be an official Arduino board, you can use any variant of your choosing. In my case, I'll be using a clone I picked up on eBay. To make hooking everything up a little easier, I recommend purchasing some headers that you can solder onto your LoRa breakout along with some jumpers for the same. For my demo and the code modifications I'll be sharing, this shows how I wired my Arduino to the LoRa breakout. Note that I used a spare maker shed hat that I found sitting around gathering dust, so my setup might look a little different from yours, but don't worry about that. As long as you get the wiring to match what I shared in the prior slide, you'll be good to go in setting up the LoRa node to talk to the Things network. With respect to the Arduino IDE, you'll need to add this library via the Tools Manage Library option in the IDE menu. You can find it by doing a library search on MCCI. Once that library is installed and recognized by the Arduino IDE, you'll want to load the example sketch TTNOTAA, which is a basic Hello World sketch for getting your node to talk to the Things Network. Note that there are some parameters in the code that will require you having a Things Network account. It also helps to have a registered gateway under your profile and one that's working so that you can test your code and see the output. Prior chapters in this playlist explain how to go about setting all that up should you need it, and there's a link to the same in the description of this video. So next, let's take a look at the example code from the MCCI library. These are the two blocks of code we'll need to customize to work with our LoRa node. Let's focus first on these three lines. So in order to get those um, parameters, I need to log in uh, to my Things Network uh, account. You can see that I do have a gateway that's registered and connected. Go ahead and click on Applications, and what you're going to want to do is add an application here and uh, uh, give it any name that you want. Um, I'm just gonna create something temporary here. I'll call it Junk 101. And then go ahead and give it a human readable description here. And then all you do is add the application. So now we actually have to register a device for this application. And uh, here I'm gonna give it a name. Uh, let's call it Arduino Laura 999. And uh, you can't have any capital letters, by the way, so I'm going to remove that capital A. And then for the device EUI, just click on this space, hit the little uh, uh, character right there, and it'll auto-generate. Go ahead and register the device. And now this device will be registered. And this is where we're going to get the parameters for that code. Uh, so there's uh, my application. There's the device ID, Arduino Laura 999. I'm going to use OTAA as my activation method. And then uh, for those uh, three lines, uh, this is where they're located. And you can show the codes that you want. Make sure that you change this MSB to LSB by clicking on these little arrows, but leave MSB on the third one as shown here. Uh, that is what you need to basically copy and paste into um, these parameters in your code. So let's start with the device EUI. 
I can go ahead and copy it directly from the uh, console. And then here's my device EUI array, and I'm just going to paste it right in here, like so. Now I can go to my application EUI. I'm going to copy it. And there's my application EUI array. Go ahead and paste it right in there. And then there's my app key. Copy. Go back to my code. There's my app key. And we can go ahead and paste that in there as well. Now I'm going to uh, save this. This is the uh, sample code that came with the library, so I'm going to give it a, a different name. Uh, I'm going to call it uh, uh, Arduino LoRa 999, same as the device ID, since it has parameters that are attached to that uh, particular device, and I'm going to save it on my desktop for now. And uh, you'll note, again, just for review, you've got your, uh, your device. Uh, there's the device, Arduino 999. Um, there is the application, Junk 101, that has one registered device, that Arduino LoRa 999. And that's how I can get back into it. And if you back up into the Applications menu, you can see that I have three applications currently running, including the one I just created, Junk 101, that has that registered device ID, Arduino LoRa 999. This next part summarizes the minimum pin definitions required to enable SPI communication between our Arduino and the LoRa radio. These will be specific to how we've wired our circuit. Deciphering this was a bit confusing for me since the two examples I had were either the default included with the example or what was listed for the Arduino Dragino shield sourced to another YouTube video. So how do I define these for my own setup? To be clear, the wiring that I've shared was originally sourced to this tutorial on Adafruit's website, but the associated tutorial was for a different library focused on having two LoRa nodes communicate with one another. I'm using a different library focused on having my node communicate with the Things network. So in order to decipher what's going on, I took a look at the schematic for the LoRa breakout and matched these breakout pin definitions with their associated pins on the LoRa radio. Through some trial and error, I learned that the .nss variable in the example code is the same as the CS or clock select pin, which is attached to pin 10 on my Arduino. The RST variable is the same as the RST on the breakout mapped to pin 5 on the Arduino. The first element in the .dio variable is the same as the g not pin on the breakout mapped to pin 2 on the Arduino. And the second DIO element is the same as g1 on the breakout mapped to pin 3 on the Arduino. And finally, I map the MOSI and MISO pins to the same on the Arduino. So over the next few seconds, I'm just going to go to the default pins and I'm going to paste in the, the redefined uh, pins as I just explained them to you. I'm going to compile all these changes and you can see that it compiled without errors. I won't go into further details of library parameters because frankly I'm not sure if I fully understand how this library works. Suffice it to say that at least now I can map LoRa radios to an Arduino using the prior slides for guidance and now so can you. Once all these parameters are defined and uploaded to the Arduino LoRa node, the code will send a hello world message to the Things Network, as I'll demonstrate next. Okay, folks, so here you can see the uh, concentrator on a Raspberry Pi. So this is the gateway that's currently registered with the uh, Things Network. And uh, there is the Arduino with the little LoRa radio and an antenna that's uh, shortly going to be... Um, flashed with this code right here, and then I'll walk you through uh, setting up an application and a device to uh, have this little piece of hardware talk to the gateway. 
Okay, folks, and here's that modified sample code with all the copy and paste. Uh, it's just been compiled and it's currently uploading to the Arduino with the LoRa radio. You can see it's done uploading. Uh, and now we can check the thing's network and uh, make sure that data is posting. You can see that I, the Arduino LoRa 999 is a device associated with Junk 101 and it received a post about a minute ago from probably from a prior run. Let's take a look at the data. Um, I cleared the data before uploading and it took a few seconds for that first data post to come up uh, and uh, it actually took a few more minutes before data started uh, posting regularly to the gateway. Uh, this is what the data looks like. It's in hexadecimal format um, and I can copy that data and I can paste it into a, a hex text to translator and you can see that the data that's posted is hello world. And this just shows you that, uh, that the uh, gateway is receiving data consistently from that uh, little Arduino LoRa node. A Hello World example is great, but what if we want to send some sensor data to the gateway? Well, Adafruit has an excellent tutorial and sample code that references the same library used for the Hello World example that you can go through that gets further into the weeds of how to do all this. This is accomplished using a Feather LoRa MO with a DHT22 temperature and humidity sensor. If you're interested, I'd encourage reviewing that tutorial and code, but to show you that the guidance can be followed successfully by noobs like me, I'll demonstrate sending temperature and humidity data to the gateway with this same circuit. Okay, folks, so uh, this time, rather than using the Arduino uh, with the uh, LoRa radio, I'm gonna be using this little uh, Feather MO LoRa with the DHT22 sensor. I went through the Adafruit tutorial and I'll demonstrate uh, how this will post data uh, to this little gateway and what that data looks like on the, uh, on the Things Network website. So now you can see that I created a Feather MO application and then I have one registered device and there it is, it's the Feather Weather, which is the Feather MO with the DHT22. And it's receiving uh, data every 30 seconds per the sketch that uh, Adafruit provided for testing. And you can see that the data here is translated. It's no longer in hexadecimal. We actually have numbers that are human readable, which is, which is nice. And the way you do that um, is uh, you go into data settings for the application, not the device. And here you can see all the data that's been posted by that Feather Weather. But go ahead and uh, what you'll want to do is click on the payload format. And here Adafruit has given you some code that will help the Things Network translate that hexadecimal into a human readable data that you can look at on the Things Network. So while I'm waiting for the radio tower to come down at ZeroCraft in anticipation of setting up a gateway there, I decided to purchase a second concentrator to ensure coverage in my own community where I live a little higher up in the foothills. In order to do this, of course, I'm going to have to mount an antenna. So here's some notes from the same. Hey folks, so I'm on top of the um, garage. That's the roof to my house right there. And I just wanted to take a look what kind of a view I might get from up here for setting up a uh, Laura Gateway. Uh, downtown is a little obfuscated by, uh, by these houses and these trees, but who knows, it might work. So I very gingerly crawled up to the, to the roof line up here. And yeah, this would be a lot better. If I can make this work, I could capture a lot of the valley with this gateway. So, get those mountains back there. Maybe set up some solar powered sensors, some nodes. There. So, uh, next time I'll talk a little bit about this little contraption I devised that give me an opportunity to install an antenna up there without uh, having to drill through tile uh, just by running coax cable to, uh, to a LoRaWAN gateway that'll be mounted on the side of my house. So, so more details on that later, and if you're interested in updates, please consider subscribing. Thanks.